Since British national Jagdar Singh Johar was arrested and detained by police in India, as he stopped, uh, as he shopped with his new wife, his family say they are desperately worried as they claim that British consular staff haven't spoken to him since March. Uh, Jagtar's still awaiting trial with no charges yet uh, being made against him. Uh, they, the family say that. Uh, and it's almost uh, a thousand days since this all began. Let's get straight into it, shall we? Let's just talk to Jagtar's brother, who is Gurpreet Singh Johal, um, who's been campaigning for his release, obviously, since 2017. And also by Jagtar's uh, MP, Martin Doherty Hughes, who is demanding Jagtar's right to a fair trial. Just um, just tell us in your words, Gopi, the problem is that he was... He went over there, he is an activist in some respects, but over there when he was in India, he's been um, arrested for sort of terrorist offences, hasn't he? Because there was a murder and he was one of ten people that the Indian government thought was involved. What's your take on what happened uh, and who your brother is? So... Just for clarity, Jack Tarr is a Scottish born and bred national who went to India in 2017 to get married. Um, and he'd got married, decided to stay with his wife, to spend a bit extra time with her to get a visa application sorted out. And on the 4th of November, he was bungled into a van. From then, he was taken into an unknown location for 10 days and he was subjected to third degree torture, which he had his legs uh, private parts uh, electrocuted. He had his legs stretched. And on the 7th of November 2017, the chief minister and the highest ranked police officer in India claimed that they had all evidence against Jack Tur. We're now nearly coming into a thousand days and Jack Tur's cell not being formally charged on the serious allegations that have been made against him. Despite all of this, he has been subjected to a trial by media. And to date, the British government have failed to ensure that he has had an independent medical examination. Despite various uh, ministers, the pri previous prime minister, raising the case with the Indian authorities, the UK government have basically failed its British citizen. Uh, uh, has there been any indication at all from the Indian authorities as the kind of evidence or the kind of reasoning that, they're, that they are putting forward as to why they have... Uh, had him detained for, for all these days? So the Indian authorities have claimed that they've got evidence against him, but today is 994 days and not an ounce of evidence has been provided. The chief in, in, uh, investigating officer in one of the cases has confirmed that there is no incriminating, no evidence or recovery of evidence against Jack Tur. Despite the chief minister and the Indian authorities claiming they have all the evidence, as they say, proof is in the pudding. If they had the evidence, surely they would have charged him by now. Um, Martin, just... yeah, let's just bring in your uh, MP here. Martin, you have been uh, raising this uh, in the Commons, haven't you? What is your understanding of the involvement of the uh, Foreign Office, the High Commission over there, and the kind of uh, effort being made diplomatically, if you like, from the British government to the Indian government, to get this case heard and given a fair trial? Well, I think some of the points that uh, Gurpreet has mentioned uh, go right to the heart of the case. Uh, nearly a thousand days, we're at 994, and maybe give you an idea of how long that really is. We've had three prime ministers, four foreign secretaries, three under secretaries, uh, two of them who have been sacked, and Jack Tarr has also had accusations against the Indian state of torture, which now live with the, the United Nations Human Rights Commissioner. Uh, there's a whole complexity in terms of the Foreign Commonwealth Office. They're being pulled uh, in one direction with, I hate to mention the B word, but Brexit. Uh, and of course, many of them having to leave desks in terms of consular support. Uh, and they're also dealing with the, the profound issues of the pandemic. So the, the staff in the FCO uh, are, are getting pulled in many different directions without direction by political leadership from the FCO, whether that be the now fourth Foreign Secretary. Uh, who I hope will take the opportunity to meet with both myself and Gurpreet and the family uh, in the months ahead. So I, I think that maybe gives you some explanation as to their lack of direction and their lack of, uh, from a political leadership perspective, of taking this seriously. It is tricky, isn't it, because it is about the legal process in a different country. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, we have to say that we have contacted the High Commission of India for a response on numerous occasions. They failed to reply. But previously they have commented saying... 
each of the cases against Mr Johal are proceeding strictly as per due process of Indian law, as in any mature democratic setup. Um, as a final point, really, I suppose, from Martin, from your point of view, do you think that there is uh, any hope that the case can be speeded up? Or do you think that actually Jagtar could just be there almost indefinitely? I mean, there is a grave concern. I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want to be saying to a, a sovereign independent nation that it shouldn't be running its own judicial system. What we are saying is that in a th nearly a thousand days, now 994, the trial by media in India has been extraordinary. So there is by the Indian state authorities. And my duty as his elected representative is to make sure that people across these islands are aware of this and that this could happen to any UK national. This isn't just the, you know, Jack Tar Singh Johal. This could be your child, this could be your son, your daughter. It could be you if you're travelling to India. Yeah, I mean, I think regardless of what, what evidence there may or may not be, I think everyone would expect a, a fair trial and a fair hearing in this. We have been in touch with the Foreign Office. Uh, a Foreign Office spokesperson has said to us, if I can just uh, read this along, if you can... Move my prompt along, please. Thank you. Uh, our staff continue to support Jagtar following his detention in India and are in regular contact with his family and prison officials about his health and well-being. We have consistently raised concerns about his case with the government of India, including allegations of torture and mistreatment and his right to a fair trial. We will continue to do so until we get a satisfactory response. Uh, Gopri and also um, 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 Martin, Martin Doherty Hughes, thanks both for joining us. And I do hope you keep to I, keep us updated the, uh, with, with uh, just on the, the progress on this. On the, last, on the last point there, what the FCO have said is a satisfactory response. That just confirms what uh, Ranveer confirmed, that they wrote to the Indian authorities and there's been no response. So if you look at that response at the end, that's exactly what the Indian authorities have been doing from day one. And the FCU have just confirmed to date that they have they have not had a satisfactory response. So this is what we have been saying as a family from day one. Our position has been clear that no due process, uh, no openness and no transparency has taken place. The Indian authorities claim that they have the evidence. We're a thousand days on, nearly a thousand days on. He's still to be formally charged. He's been subjected to torture and mistreatment. Jack Tarr is a British national. The British government need to do more to protect his British citizens. As Martin has already said, that this could happen to anyone. This could be you in any other country. Take action. Rory Stewart had a, a promised extreme action in 2017. To date, no extreme action has been taken. Instead, the FCO and the UK government have only frustrated the family Currently, Jack Tur's wife is in the UK and she's also facing um, to be removed from the it's UK because... Yeah. Okay. It's obviously a very so, complex case, but um, it's good to hear from both of you this morning, of course, as you've been saying. You know, the only other case that presents to mind is Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, of course, which is one of those other issues um, that has been, uh, been heard a lot about. But we wish you uh, well with your, your push to try and get to your brother a fair trial, uh, because everybody wants to know the facts, don't they, at the end of the day. Thank you, both of you. Thank you.